Hey guys, what's up? It's Zach, aka Moose, here once again from Moose Survival and Tactical. Um, off work today, out sick, nothing horrible. Got some time in my hand, I figured I'd start off getting some actual content going for my channel other than box reviews. So today, <clears throat> I'm gonna start off a pretty basic survival tactical prepper item. I'm gonna talk about a bug out bag. Uh, specifically, I'm going to talk about my bug out bag, uh, kind of for the area I'm in. Not going to go through everything because there's a lot of stuff that's specific for this area, but just kind of general idea, kind of hit some of the things that you definitely need in a bug out bag. So with further ado, without further ado, we're going to get to it. My bug out bag of choice is the 72 hour Paratus from 3V gear. Really comfortable bag. A lot of room in there, all kinds of little attachments to it. Bag is the most important thing with a bug out bag, right? You want something that's comfortable, something you can carry for a while, um, something that can carry your stuff in it. Uh, this bag, I don't know why I just put it down. Cushion on the back, good padded shoulders, clips to go across the chest as well as across the waist. Just a good quality bag. Uh, I, I love 3V gear because they are some quality bags. Um, they're an online manufacturer, so it's a direct customer. They don't really have any stores, so it's cheaper. And I think that bag cost $60 or $70, and I've seen that bag similar to that go easily $200. Um, so I'm a big fan of 3V gear. Actually, my everyday bag is a 3V gear bag. So without further ado, I'm going to keep going into it. Uh, as you saw, on top of the bag, something for bugging out, is a tent. Uh, and as you can see, I got this from BattleBox. I'm a very big BattleBox fan. Um, this is their one-man bivy tent. Uh, I've set this up a couple times. I've camped out in my backyard a couple times with it. I hadn't gotten a chance to go out and camp with it, really. Um, big fan of it. I'm actually getting ready to replace this one, though, with a two-man tent because uh, the girlfriend realized it was a one-man tent and didn't like the idea of having her own tent um, and not sharing a tent with me. So this is getting ready to go uh, to a personal hiking bag. Uh, and then I will be putting a two man tent on my bug out bag. Um, tent is a great thing to have. It's shelter, you know, it's home if you're bugging out. Hopefully if you're bugging out, you have a location to go to, uh, not just you know out in the middle of the woods. Uh, but if you're a couple of days away from that location, you want some sort of shelter, right? I'm gonna lift this bag up so I'm not reaching out of view for everything. Next, to go along with the tent, three season sleeping bag. Good compression sleeping bag. Um, <clears throat> you know, in the summer I stay hot, so this would be something I probably just lay on top of in the summer. But spring and fall, and even winter, winter, you know, I pack a bunch of blankets over the top of it. Spring and fall, it's great to have for those chilly nights. Uh, you know, because the last thing you want is hypothermia. That's, that kill you quick. Again, next thing we got is something from BattleBox. BattleBox has kind of given me ideas, kind of helped me get started on a lot of my bug out stuff. Um, a all-purpose tarp. It's a 12 foot by nine and a half foot tarp. Great for, you know, if I wanted to put a rain canopy yeah, you know, my tent comes with a, a rain shelter type deal, but this would be great um, for almost building a lean-to, kind of help keep rain off of the tent. You set it up. I've also got some clips, gorilla clips right here. I need to take them out of the bag and just throw them in there. Um, but they're tarp clips that actually, you know, clip on, grab on to the tarp and kind of help stretch it out, keep it taut. Um, also, you could use that as a footprint for your tent if you needed to kind of get it off the ground um, tarps are also good if you needed to emergency you know rain collection you set it up have it storms are coming uh, you could have it set up for um, you know, rain collection so it rains and all the water pulls in the middle of it and then you've got drinking water if necessary um, and then with that also I've got a three-quarter length sleeping pad uh again just something kind of help with comfort uh it's 
easy in flight, holds up really well, semi-comfortable, not the great, you know, not like sleeping on a bed, but still pretty comfortable. Just knocked something down on my desk. Um, going in here. And of course, I've got a pot for cooking. All right? Super important with this pot. I've also got a alcohol stove. If I had alcohol, the pot has the measurements lined on the inside of it. And this thing, this is a pot and a, a setup for the stove, bottom piece for the stove. Um, something, you know, really good. I'm, I'm big about things that, you know, either, you know, stack up good or have multiple purposes. Because um, if I can get one piece that does five things, it's better than having five pieces that do one thing each, right? <clears throat> so, uh, have that, you know, cooking. Again, ideally you've got a location that you're bugging out to. Um, maybe just, you know, getting within 72 hours. I did for, I'm sorry, I should have said this earlier. The idea for the bug out bag is kind of a 72 hour bag. You want enough in it to be able to survive for 72 hours. Um, hopefully your location you're bugging out to is no longer than 72 hours away from it. Go along with cooking. Wild Oak Camper Box. Neat little box in here. It's a nesting box. Little cutting board opens up. I've got a cup, a bowl, a sport knife combo, little season cup. If I want to load it down with seasoning, seasoning is going to be important if you're bugging out, you know, because if you're cooking food, a lot of it's going to be bland. And then finally, a little plate. Uh, again, just something that kind of helps with convenience. Yeah, I could eat off the ground if I need to, don't want to. I could, you know, the more you can do everything to kind of help with your comfort level, the easier it's going to be for you. Also, kind of going with the uh, sleeping bed and everything, I've got a little blow up pillow. Here's a storm. A little blow up pillow just helps with head support, you know, kind of not cranking back on your neck. Go along with more cooking. I've got this little piece right here. This is a grill, actually. Um, <clears throat> it's meant for like if you've got a fire going, like, you know, like you've got a little campfire going, you take this apart. I'm not gonna take it apart completely. But you've got all these pieces in here that you screw together, legs and everything, and you can form a grill to set over your campfire. Um, great for cooking. I, I have not used this yet. I had not done near as much camping as I would like to this year. I uh, haven't done enough camping to actually need that. But definitely something that I keep. Next thing, <clears throat> talk about water collection with the tarp. You also want to place to store water. I keep this in the bag just till I need it because it's easier to keep in the bag. Uh, and even after I use it, I'll probably keep it in the bag and fold it up. Two gallon water bag. Water is life, right? So, way to, to hold water, keep it clean. But and then in emergency situations, as I throw stuff, got the Sawyer Frontier Straw. I'm sorry, it's not Sawyer, it's Aqua Marina or Aqua Mira. Sawyer makes a similar product, uh, pretty much similar to a life straw. Um, this thing does 30 gallons of water, uh, parasite protection, cyst removal, uh, chlorine taste and odor removal. And then it shows you on the back kind of how it works out. I wish my light wouldn't quite do that, but anyway. Uh, so water storage, water bag for long-term water solution. This for emergency water solution. I'm hiking, I'm parts, I don't have any water in my water bottle. Find a creek, I've got a way to get water safely, right? Oh, let's see. 
work my way through. Also with that, kind of keep, I've kind of still working on getting things organized a little bit uh, from my move, but I've got most everything. Uh, to go with the water bag is a way to purify the water. These are mineral-based water purifying drops from Purinize. Um, these are great. You know, you can just drop a few drops in, leave it sitting for what's it say? Uh, 20 drops per quart, leave sitting for an hour. So for long-term water solution, that two-gallon bag, I can do this, let it sit, and go get stuff done when I need. Come back, and I've got clean water. Great thing to have. I also like to keep with me. Won't come off. This is a Elk Ridge hatchet. Um, I like to have a hatchet. You know, I've got knives that I could chop if I need. I could chop with if I needed to. But for actually making firewood and you know kindling and all that stuff to keep fire going, it's great just to have a little hatchet. Um, just something kind of meant to to separate wood. Um, so I keep this on my bug out bag as well. But a good handle, comfortable. Another great thing that I like to keep with me. Um, I'm not going to open up and go through everything, but as you can see, I've also got a pair of Leatherman shears. These things are great shears. And this, this is part of my medical supplies. I'm not going to go through medical supplies uh, because you know everybody knows their own medical supplies best. I have them set up for me and, and my girlfriend. Um, but, you know, it's definitely important to keep medical supplies. But also with that, it's important to keep medical supplies that you know how to use. Worst thing you can do is have a bunch of medical supplies you have no idea how to use because A, you're tying up important space. B, if you try to use it, you can screw something up worse than what it was. Keep the ball rolling. Another thing I got in here flashlight. A cool thing about this flashlight is it pops up into a lantern. What's great about this, love this flashlight, this is from Hybrid Light. I can charge it via USB, uh, you know, it can charge a USB device or I can charge it solar. Solar is a great option. Anything you can find that's solar that actually works, use it because that's a free energy source, right? And I turned it on and put it in my bag. Some more water. All right. Last but not least. We're going to go over another important piece of bugging out, a.k.a. survival, fire starting. So, went over shelter, water, and fire. Fire is the last thing you need. Um, I keep this waterproof fire starting kit with me. Um, got some uh, bee fire fuse, what they call it. So, beeswax infused... Uh, be beeswax infused yarn it looks like um, beeswax is very flammable so that's awesome um, catches a spark really quick then a ferro rod and striker always important you know, never go wrong with ferro rod and striker almost are you can you can't have enough of them <clears throat> and then this little thing I love this little thing it's a little pocket bellow it, it extends out say you've got a, you're trying to get your fire started but you don't want to get your face right down in the fire Extend it out, and you're blowing air into your fire without having your face right in your fire. Um, those are my basic fire starting things. I've got another couple fire starters in this bag, as well as another simple thing, Ready Man Pocket Survival Stove. Um, something simple that I can keep with me, um, as well as a lighter because, you know, <laughs> It never fails when you need something the most it's not going to work so you know ferro rod and striker something like that my luck it's going to go out so keep a lighter just in case so the lighter is the 
you know, last resort fire starter. Um, I always want to use my ferro rod uh, or, you know, strikers or something else before that. Simply because, like I said, it's last resort. Fuel, you know, in a bug out situation, fuel might be hard to come by. More lighters might be hard to come by. So you want to, you know, make sure that you're using something that is non-renewable sparingly. Or something, you know, ferro rod, you're getting a ton of strikes out of that. Lighter, you're getting, what, maybe 100 strikes out of it, maybe. Uh, I'm going to do the, you know, math on that. Sit there and play with one one day to kind of see. Uh, another thing I keep on me, again, if I can't get the, uh, like the, the waxed yarn to strike, something like this, util flame. I like this stuff because it's basically like, it's not, but I'm going to give it the best example I can. It's basically like a gelled alcohol in a way. Um, you just tear it open, squeeze out the package, you light it, and the gel itself will stay lit for, I believe it's 15 minutes. So, again, another last resort thing, um, if you can't get it going with, you know, just your regular tender. Um, I guess, yeah, with the uh, lighted yarn, that's another thing. Like, you're using that if you can't get struck off just regular tender. Um, a couple things I haven't gone over in my bag is, you know, some of the freeze-dried food I have and stuff like that, dehydrated food. Simply because that's very specific, I can't tell you what. I can just tell you, you need stuff that, you know, can get you through for a couple of days. Um, something that, you know, I advise going out and buying some of the stuff, trying it. Something, because the last thing you want to happen is you go buy the stuff, never try it. You need to use it, and it tastes like dog crap. You know, food is going to be a big morale booster in a bug out situation. So if you want something that you want something that actually tastes good, if you're eating, you know, stuff that tastes like dog crap all day, you're going to be kind of pissed off in a bad mood. It's going to hurt morale. Um, another important thing that I like is a ranger bead. Right? These are for counting distance. Each one of these represents 100 meters. Each one of these represents a meter. Um, you know, you, you, I'm not going to go over how you figure out, you know, how you count on that. And that's something you can go look at yourself. Um, but it's something definitely, you know, if if you're doing some long-term hiking, or if you're bugging out to a specific location that you know is, you know, let's say four kilometers away, it's good to know, you know, exactly how far you've traveled. So if, you know, say you've traveled three and a half kilometers, so you've only got 500 kilometers or three and a half kilometers, you've only got 500 meters left to go, but you don't really know how far away you are and you, you know, and you're exhausted. Do you stop and set camp up 500 meters away from where you are or do you keep going? Um, you know, you definitely want, don't want to exhaust yourself, but it is important. And then <clears throat> I'm going to wrap this up last but not least, um, just something that I personally carry because I love, um, Something that's definitely important in a bug out situation is a good knife. This is the Gerber LMF2. Um, it's a good solid knife, um, you know, good flat back, so you can use that for hammering, for splitting wood if you need to. Um, just a good solid construction. It has a good sheath that it comes with. Sheath is off because I want to be able to show it off a little easier. Um, you know, good glass breaker slash striking surface um, just a good solid knife in general definitely important in bug out situation you're gonna be cutting a ton um, you're gonna be you know using knife for food prep anything so having a good quality knife is definitely a you know important thing and this is a quality knife that's not gonna break the bank it's I want to say this is $90 to $120 somewhere in there so you pay for it but it's a quality knife um, Old saying, you know, better to, to buy quality and cry once than buy crap and cry three times because you keep replacing. So anyway, that's going to wrap it up. Um, this is just a simple bug out explanation. Um, there's a ton more we can go into and I might go into later. But for now, like I said, simple bug out. This is some of the stuff that I find important. You know, I'm going to have paracord. I'm going to have, you know, a gun on me most likely or maybe a couple of guns most likely but all that's personal preference i'm just going over you know some of the stuff that i view is necessary so shelter 
fire, water, and a way to, to you know easily make food with your fire and water, right? So anyway, <clears throat> hope this wasn't too much of me rambling. Um, hope you guys enjoy it. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, feel free to leave them in the comment section. I will get back as soon as possible. Uh, until next time, this is Moose signing out. Stay safe, guys.